Assalamu alaikum, my name is Halima and welcome to Quran Rehab. Now us Brits are very well known for our approach in the resolution to our problems. So regardless of the type of dramas that we face, the process to solution and recovery usually always begins with someone sticking on the kettle and making us a lovely warm cup of tea. Now, although we all love tea and that's great, I've actually created this short three-part video series to share with you a very simple recipe to a very special type of brew, a cup for the heart. Now, just as we typically use three ingredients, the tea bag, sugar and milk, to mix with our hot water in order to create these lovely cups of tea, um, in the hope that this will be the beginning of the process to, to make us feel better. Um, inshallah, I'll be sharing with you three very powerful ingredients that are guaranteed to make you feel better, inshallah, when you're experiencing any type of emotional turmoil. Now, the reason that I've chosen to talk about this subject is because in a previous series entitled Seasons of the Heart, um, we began to explore the subject of emotions in, related to the, in relation to the Qur'an and Islam um, by exposing some of the misconceptions we have and we even began to derive some practical lessons from the Qur'an um, and strategies for actually effectively managing those emotions. And we started by beginning, to, by beginning with the emotion of fear. But the reality is that when we're in the moment, in the eye of the storm, so to speak, when we're intensely experiencing those raw emotions, it can be quite difficult for us to approach and manage those emotions in that constructive and productive way we might want to, where we can easily and effectively apply the techniques that we've learned from the Qur'an in order to manage them. But alhamdulillah, the Qur'an being the beautiful, fully comprehensive, practical guide that it is, it actually teaches us three techniques that we can also use to lower the intensity of any emotion so that we can then be in a sufficient state in order to approach the management of those um, emotions in an effective way. In fact, these three techniques are so powerful that not only do they reduce the intensity of any emotion that we're feeling, but they can actually collectively be used to create any positive emotion that we want instantly. Whether that be feelings of happiness, excite, excitement or love, for example. Ingredient number one relates to body language and our physiology. It's really important to note that motion creates emotion. Let's think about it for a moment. How many people have you seen at a theme park on these crazy roller coasters or how many people have you seen jumping frantically on a trampoline in the garden feeling really sad and depressed? How many people have you seen sat at their desk stationary like statues for over half an hour with their heads buried in their hands feeling really ecstatic and excited and energised? The answer is that we don't. And that's because contrary to popular belief, we can actually change the way we feel instantly by learning to change the way we use our bodies. Now people often complain, in order for me to feel better, I need to have an apology from so and so, I need to lose X amount of kg, I need to find that special somebody, I need to get that perfect job, etc. When the reality is that that's not actually true. We can actually use our physiology to change that almost instantly. Just think about it for a moment. How many of you know somebody, or maybe even you yourselves, when you feel a certain emotion such as anger or sadness, for example, feel an impulse to um, take a walk, or to lie down, or to hit the gym, or take a drive, for example? I personally figure skate, and I know that as soon as I hit the ice, I feel completely different. Now, these are a natural and instinctive way of our bodies calling us to take action in order for us to change the way we feel. This technique from the Qur'an, derived from the story of Musa a.s., is most beautifully and clearly demonstrated for us in two contrasting incidents. In the first incident, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, relates to us the beautiful historical moment where he and Musa a.s. speak directly. And within this meeting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a miracle. He transforms Musa's staff into a serpent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of Musa alayhi salam's reaction. Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَأَلْقِ عَصَاكِ فَلَمَّا رَآهَا تَحْتَ الزُّكَ كَأَنَّهَا جَانٌ وَلَّا مُبْدِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ so not only does Musa a.s. feel a fear in his heart, but he actually embodies the physical traits and characteristics that intensify that emotion. So what do I mean? Well, when we describe a person who is um, 
experiencing feelings and emotions of fear, we would say in terms of their, their body language and their physiology that their heart, their heart rate might have gone up, for example. Um, or they might feel a bit shaky or feel butterflies in their stomach from the adrenaline running around their body. They might feel breathless, etc. And then when we describe somebody who's actually running, which was Musa salam's reaction to this miracle, we, f we would describe that person as, again, feeling breathless. Running makes your heart rate increase. Um, you have a lot of adrenaline running around your body, etc. So for ourselves, if we're feeling really down and sad, for example, um, yet we choose to sit in a position or to move around in a position um, that only characterizes that emotion. So for example, we sit with our arms crossed, with our heads down, our breathing is shallow, um, or we curl up, etc. We are not helping ourselves to break that physical state um, that can actually make us feel better and, and feel different. Now the second great incident was where Fir'aun called Musa publicly in front of all of the people of Egypt on a, on a day of a great festival and where he called and collected all of the magicians of Egypt. Some of the say it could have been up to 15,000 magicians and he challenged Musa to a duel. And now when all these magicians had cast their ropes and their sticks and these sticks and ropes appeared to the people in the form of serpents, um, Allah SWT narrates to us the reaction of Musa Allah SWT says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فأوجس في نفسه خيفة موسى So in this verse, Allah SWT tells us that Musa السلام, did in fact feel fear in his heart. But the difference here was that he consciously chose not to allow those emotions to manifest onto his limbs. Instead, he chose to physically embody um, characteristics of strength and confidence. So subhanAllah, by changing the way that we utilize our bodies, um, we can not only lower the intensity of how we feel, um, but we can actually alternatively choose to embody the characteristics of those emotions we want to feel, and that will naturally encourage those genuine uh, emotions being felt. So in terms of um, applying that to our day-to-day -day life, um, if you're feeling an emotion uh, or, or in a negative state that you'd like to change, why not take up an activity or a sport that you enjoy, where you're physically uh, changing the positions and movements of your body? Or just be more consciously aware of how you're utilizing your body, to stay away from those physical um, characteristics and traits that will only imprison you in that negative state with those negative emotions and alternatively um, try to embody those physical traits and, and the physiology that will only encourage the positive emotions you want to feel. And the same goes for our loved ones around us. So if we see someone in a negative state, a friend or a family member that we'd really like to help to break, um, to break out of, why not um, take them on a walk or give them a hug? Or it can be even as simple um, as getting them to pass you something nearby or alternatively you passing them something like a lovely warm cup of tea and don't forget the biscuits my name is halima you've been checked into quran rehab so until next time inshallah take care